education is not preparation for life. Education is life itself. That is according to John Dewey, who is one of the proponents of the progressivism. John Dewey was an American philosopher and educator, founder of the philosophical movement known as pragmatism, a pioneer in functional psychology, and a leader of the progressive movement in education in the United States. John Dewey was born on October 20, 1859 in Burlington, Vermont. He graduated with a bachelor's degree from the University of Vermont in 1879. In 1894, Dewey joined the newly founded University of Chicago from 1894 to 1904, where he developed his belief in rational empiricism becoming associated with the newly emerging pragmatic philosophy. His time at the University of Chicago resulted in four essays collectively entitled Thought and Its Subject Matter, which was published with collected works from his colleagues at Chicago under the collective title Studies in Logical Theory. During that time, Dewey also initiated the University of Chicago laboratory schools where he was able to actualize the pedagogical beliefs that provided material for his first major work on education, The School and Society, which was written in 1899. Divergences with the administration ultimately triggered his resignation from the university, and soon thereafter, he relocated near the East Coast. In 1899, Dewey was designated President of the American Psychological Association. From 1904 until his retirement in 1930, he was Professor of Philosophy at both Columbia University and Columbia University's Teachers College. In 1905, he became President of the American Philosophical Association. He was a longtime member of the American Federation of Teachers. Dewey's most significant writings were The Reflex Arc Concept in Psychology, Democracy and Education, Human Nature and Conduct, The Public and Its Problems, Experience and Nature, Art as Experience, A Common Faith, Logic the Theory of Inquiry, Freedom and Culture, and Knowing and the Known. Reflecting his immense influence on 20th century thought, Hilde Netby, in 1953, wrote, Dewey has been to our age what Aristotle was to the later Middle Ages, not a philosopher, but the philosopher. Dewey's educational theories were presented in my pedagogic read, The School and Society, The Child and the Curriculum, democracy and education, and experience and education. Several themes repeat throughout these writings. Dewey recurrently claims that education and learning are social and interactive processes, and thus the school itself is a social institution through which social reform can and should take place. In addition, he believed that students thrive in an environment where they are allowed to experience and interact with the curriculum and all students should have the opportunity to take part in their own learning. In Dewey's opinion, the main purpose of education should not revolve around the acquisition of a predetermined set of skills, but rather the realization of one's full potential and the ability to use those skills for the greater good. He notes that to prepare him for the future life means to give him command of himself. It means so to train him that he will have the full and ready use of all his capacities. Dewey had specific notions regarding how education should take place within the classroom. In The Child and the Curriculum, Dewey discusses two major conflicting schools of thought regarding educational pedagogy. The first is centered on the curriculum and focuses almost solely on the subject matter to be taught. Dewey argues that the major flaw in this methodology is the inactivity of the student. Within this particular framework, the child is simply the immature being who is to be matured. He is the superficial being who is to be deepened. He argues that in order for education to be most effective, 
content must be presented in a way that allows the student to relate the information to prior experiences, thus deepening the connection with this new knowledge. At the same time, Dewey was alarmed by many of the child-centered excesses of educational school pedagogies who claimed to be his followers, and he argued that too much reliance on the child could be equally detrimental to the learning process. In this second school of thought, he said, we must take our stand with the child and our departure from him. It is he and not the subject matter which determines both quality and quantity of learning. According to Dewey, the potential flaw in this line of thinking is that it minimizes the importance of the content as well as the role of the teacher. In order to rectify this dilemma, Dewey encouraged for an educational framework that strikes a balance between distributing knowledge while also considering the interests and experiences of the student. He notes that the child and the curriculum are simply two limits which define a single process. Just as two points define a straight line, so the present standpoint of the child and the facts and truths of studies define instruction. It is through this reasoning that Dewey became one of the most famous proponents of hands-on learning or experiential education, which is related to but not synonymous with experiential learning. He argued that if knowledge comes from the impressions made upon us by natural objects, it is impossible to procure knowledge without the use of objects which impress the mind. For Dewey and his philosophical followers, Education stifles individual autonomy when learners are taught that knowledge is transmitted in one direction, from the expert to the learner. Dewey not only reimagined the way that the learning process should take place, but also the role that the teacher should play within that process. For Dewey, the thing needful is improvement of education, not simply by turning out teachers who can do better the things that are not necessary to do but rather by changing the conception of what constitutes education.